So I've assembled everything that I need to get started on the clay bust project. Before I can do that, I want to make sure that I think about my work environment. I'm in an area that I can easily clean up with a water and sponge. You're in an area where there isn't carpet, where this clay is going to fall in and you're going to have to live with that dust forever. Clay is a really fine material. It's absolutely safe to work with when it's wet. The problem is, is when it dries. You don't want to be breathing that in constantly. So as long as we can manage the water content in the clay, it's really safe to work with. Do your best to work outside or in a place where you can easily clean up before the clay dries. So what I also have are photos to work from, my template that's ready, things that I'm going to make tools of, along with a little bit of glue to aid me with that, an armature, and this little anchor that I'm going to use to hold up additional clay in the head, a bowl of water and a sponge so that I can constantly keep my area clean, and about 10 pounds of clay. If you were to look at most sculpting tools, you'd see that they're either flat, round, angled, or pointed. And so I've taken these popsicle sticks and cut them into those basic positions. I'm going to double them up, glue them together, add a little bit of tape, and then sand them to the tip that I want. One other tool that you may want to have is something that will help you give flat planes. And just a simple stick will work there. So I'm going to take this basic popsicle stick and a pair of scissors. It's easy enough to cut these things. One thing that you don't want to do is cut down into the wood. If I do that, it's going to split just like an axe splits wood. What I'm going to do is cut up and away. That way the force of the scissors will break this part. And it's keeping this part of the wood nice and clean. So again, I could cut an angle. I could cut this thing straight. I could cut two angles and cut up and away and then up and away. So I've cut two of these at an angle and I've left the other two sides round. I'm going to go ahead and glue those two together. I'm going to match those angles up. I'm just going to wrap some tape around that to help bind it together. The glue is going to do most of this job. If you've got a couple of binder clips, you could go ahead and clamp those together and leave those to dry for a little bit. I especially want the tips of these tools to be compressed together. So I'm going to put some paper clips on these as clamps and leave that to dry a little bit. So now I'm going to sculpt the edge of this down by sanding it a little bit. Since I'm going to use sandpaper and wood, that means I'm going to create sawdust. Do this in a place where you can clean up ideally outside. Sawdust, just like clay dust, is something that you should be mindful of. You don't want to be breathing that. So I've got more of a sharp tip there. Now I could use just one piece of popsicle stick. This is just giving me a little bit more thickness and I could glue a bunch of these together. If you have tongue depressors, you could glue those together and get some even bigger tools. This one I'm going to go ahead and round out. I didn't wait for the glue to dry, so it's really not together there. Make sure that you do. Here are some other things that you may have around the house that could be useful tools. First of all, a knife of some kind for cutting clay and sculpting. A fork for scoring and slipping, though that knife can be used as well. Pencils are already a point, and at the other end you have that eraser which you could shape into many different pieces. There's really expensive silicone tip tools, but a pencil eraser, if you want to take the time and sand that up or cut it with a knife, can be used as well. I've got the round tip over here and then the sharp pointed tip over here. Um, if you have a clothespin at home, take that thing apart and you could actually glue those two things side by side, wrap some tape around them, and see what kind of tools you can get out of that. Again, there's a sanding block that you can use to take those down. Let's see, I've got that one there is made up of a clothespin. Uh, this one's a chopstick, some takeout chopsticks, which you would normally break apart. But again, I use that same technique with the pair of scissors and trim that thing down. I may have put some glue in there to make sure it wouldn't break, or that part that's broken, that it stayed together and wrapped some tape around it and then sanded that. So again, a nice round tool up here and a nice sculpting tool at the other side. 
This one might look like a sculpture, sculpture tool that I bought, but that's actually one, two, three, four, five, six popsicle sticks all glued together and then shaped. So laminating is really strong. Again, I could wrap tape around that in order to make that even stronger, but I have a basic sculpture tool there. I wasn't very patient with the glue drying and sanding those. Always wait to shape these things for the glue to dry, which is at least an hour, but best would be to put plenty of glue on it, tape it, and then leave it overnight and work on it the next day. But um, the shapes here, they're an extension of your hand. So when you can't get your finger in there, you want something that's nice and hard and sharper in there. When you can't quite get your, the pad of your finger in, that's what that one is for. If some of your fingers are just, just aren't pointy enough and you need to get in somewhere, you can do that. Our fingers aren't square enough, and so a tool that's nice and flat, 90 degrees, is helpful there as well. Okay, so now that I have a set of homemade tools and a few other things assembled, my armature, my template, I've got a bag of clay and pictures ready to go, I'm ready to move on to the next video and actually putting clay on the armature and building up this clay bust.